Well, hello everybody, and welcome to part four of my plumbing under the slab video. And uh, wouldn't you know it, it rained like crazy last night and collapsed half of my ditch. So I'm gonna have to get my shovel out and clean up a little bit here. Now, if you're a helper on the crew, uh, while the plumber's over there laying out those string lines and excavating those ditches and everything, uh, you have a job to do. Don't just be standing around with your hands in your pocket or playing on your phone. Um, you can go ahead and unload the pipe, get it off the truck, get all your supplies, everything you might need, uh, and start making some cuts. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is your risers for like your toilet and those sinks and stuff. Uh, you're going to want to cut about a three to four foot piece uh, for each one of those, and then you can go ahead and wrap it in the foam and in the tar paper and with the tape. Now, the point of wrapping it is um, you have to protect this pipe from the concrete. Uh, we use tar paper. It works very well for us. Uh, on your lavatory stuff, you can just wrap it in tar paper. Um, but now, on your toilets, you're going to have to have a three-inch riser, and you're going to want to wrap it in that foam. Uh, that way, when the rough-in guys come along, they can cut that pipe off and glue their, their flange down on top of it uh, without having to worry about chipping around the concrete and stuff. At one time, we used to use cardboard, uh, but we had an inspector say that termites would eat cardboard, so we don't use cardboard anymore. We use this foam stuff. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to cut is you have to have a six-inch sleeve when traveling through concrete horizontally. So when we exit this house, we're going to have to sleeve it because we're going to go through a foot, and there's a foot in all the way around. It always is. And uh, pay attention on your plans. You might be going through a foot and uh, somewhere in the middle of the house as well. You want to try to avoid that if possible, but if you do have to go through the footing, you have to sleeve it with a piece of pipe that is two pipe sizes bigger. It's not just double the pipe size, it's two pipe sizes bigger. So uh, you have a three inch pipe, you have a four inch pipe, you have a six inch. So we sleeve it with the six inch. So get out your sawzall, start cutting those. Do you remember how many we had? We had a toilet, we had a uh, pedestal for that powder bath. We had two drops and those are going to be three inches. Uh, we had that vent behind the wash machine and we had a kitchen sink. The vent and the kitchen sink, they're going to be two inches. Here you go. I got my risers all cut up. I got two drops and I got my one for my toilet. It's got my foam on the inside. Give it that little extra space and then I've got my kitchen sink. Uh, my vent for that washing machine and that pedestal sink. And now you can go lay these out. Uh, by this time, uh, they should be done digging and uh, you can pull your strings again and actually start laying your pipe. So let's get to it. My suggestion to get started here is, well, you're gonna kinda level this ditch off the best you can uh, with your shovel, just kinda eyeballing it and then, uh, Get your pipe and throw it in the hole. Now you want to be careful. You don't want to fill your pipe full of dirt right off the bat. Um, that can cause some problems later on. Try to be as clean as you possibly can. Now uh, I'm going to leave that 90 for that riser off because I've got some fittings to cut in down here and uh, this might float back and forth on me a little bit. Uh, I'm going to try to leave enough down there that uh, pretty much all I got to do is glue the 90 on and pop the riser up. But I don't know what's going to happen with these fittings yet, and that's an easy thing to do down there. Well, let's lay some pipe. Uh, this is kind of hard to do on camera because you um, can't really see a whole lot of what's going on down here, but um, I'm going to try to do my best with it. Uh, we laid out this one section of pipe here to get going. Break out your level. Check your fall across there. You don't want too much fall, you don't want too little fall. Uh, what you're looking for is about a quarter to an eighth of an inch of bubble. Um, if you're interested in wanting to know how to read a level, I did a whole little uh, video on levels, so I'm not going to get too much into it. Uh, but you don't want to be flat because things will get left behind in your pipe. You don't want to be too much because things can get left behind in your pipe. And you don't want to be going back the other way. Uh, because it'll go back the other way. So keep your level with you, check it as you go. Remember, 
in the beginning here, you can shift and slide this stuff around if you're not quite where you need to be. Um, but once you start getting drops all locked in, you're not going to want to move, uh, move it around too much. Well, um, I kind of changed my layout design here a little bit because of my ditch, but you can do that. You can cut this pipe with hand, by hand if you want to. Um, but Sawzall works just fine. Just remember to clean your edges up when you get done. Wipe that dirt out from under your fit in there. Get your glue. I like to put my glue together like this in a nice little carrying case. Get your primer out, go ahead and prime all the way around there. And I'm a mess when it comes to primer. But man, it taught me how to do this. He take that primer thing out, he smack it on the ground, throw that primer on the ground so he could get a nice uh so he wasn't dripping it all over the place. You get a nice good uh, coat. Now I also have a video on how to do your glue. It's not so bad when you're out here in the dirt like this. Oop, I didn't mean to glue that side. Remember these things are directional. Our flow is going this way, so we're gonna go that way with it. Uh, don't turn it around the other way, they'll fail you. And it won't work right. Now when I'm doing this and I've got uh, a decent length of pipe, now if it's just a little teeny piece, I'm gonna chunk it, but I'm just gonna kinda keep this running. Yeah, I'm a mess. A lot of this stuff here, you can watch all the YouTube videos you want, but um, just really gonna have to get out in the field and do it. That's the best way to learn. All right, I'm gonna have to get me some more pipe and get another battery for my Sawzall. All right, we're back in business. Um, watch that dirt on those fittings. I mean, a little bit ain't gonna hurt nothing, but if you get a whole chunk in there, uh, it's gonna mess with you. Um, I went ahead and cut some little sections here. Um, remember, as you go along, I got my strings pulled back out here. You're gonna check those measurements. You're gonna try it. Remember, this is the outside of the wall. I want to be right here somewhere. But it's gonna be the same process pretty much over and over again as we go. Glue and pipe together. I know this is probably really boring watching me do this. 
And I'm not gonna film the whole thing. I'll probably lose y'all real quick. Alright, here's our um, our little two inch riser. This is for that pedestal sink. Level out. Make sure you go in the right direction. Go. Check our distance. I'd say I did pretty good. See, at this point, I'm not quite in that wall where I want to be. I can back up, but um, you can't do too much of that as you start getting stuff going on because if I go down there and I pull on this thing, I'm going to mess up where I've got this. So this, this is pretty much locked into place for now. We got to go over there and do our toilet. I think I'll show you that one, and uh, we'll talk about some bedding. This is for our toilet. <clears throat> Remember, keep your tape measure with you. Check those measurements. I'm kind of proud of myself. I haven't done this in 10 years. Guess it's like riding a bike. Oh, that's something I want to say while I'm here. Uh, the pipe has this birthmark on it. It's a lettering. It tells you what size and a bunch of different stuff about it. When I lay mine, I always try to turn the numbers up and I want the direction of flow going the way you read it. But now that's just kind of a preference. Um, you don't have to do that, but a lot of plumbers do do that. If I was to ever have to come dig this pipe up, I'm gonna know immediately that it's a three inch pipe and my, my water's going that way. Where's my 90? Now when you're gluing, <clears throat> when you're gluing this stuff, watch out for the dirt. That dirt can cause you a lot of problems later on. Remember to hold these fittings. They like to push off that glue. It's making a chemical weld there. It likes to push back on you. There we go. Now remember this felt paper? 
uh, is to protect the pipe from the concrete. The concrete's gonna pretty much be level with the, uh, the pad here, and it's gonna be up four inches. If you're sitting way up here, they're gonna fail you. They're gonna want you to come back and push that down a little bit. There we go. That looks good. <laughs> but yeah, check your measurements. Looks good. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm gonna wrap some things up here and uh, we're gonna get down to the other end and uh, I'm gonna show you how to test this thing out. Got a little ahead of myself there. Uh, we're not gonna be testing for a little while. Um, when you're doing this, and I like to do this as I go along when I'm done with an area, you gotta bed the pipe. And pretty much that's getting some dirt up under it. The way I used to do it was just kind of walk it down from the sides off the edge here and get it up under that pipe. You want it, you want it to sit in a bed. You don't you don't want anybody pushing down because if somebody came up here and stood on this you can put a belly in that line and you don't want that to happen you'll have leaks clogs well you'll have clogs later uh, and chipping up a concrete slab after it's been poured isn't exactly fun but that's pretty much it you're gonna give it a nice bed to sit in to sleep in and then every so often you're gonna scoop a bunch of dirt on top of this Pack it down, check it with your level as you go, but you're just gonna kinda put a little pile like that. Um, now when you're doing this, these little piles, don't cover your fittings. The inspectors don't like that. They wanna see each fit. And it's also a good thing for you too, uh, because if you have a leak, it's gonna be in a fit. It's not gonna be in a long run of pipe unless somebody drilled a hole through it or something, or it's cracked, uh, which I have seen that. But, you're just gonna go along and you're gonna bed it so often, every so often. You just don't want it to move. Once you've done all this hard work to lay it out, you don't want it moving, you don't want it going anywhere. But just pretty much like that, don't cover your fittings. Um, but that's it, that's kinda how to bed your pipe. Uh, now let's go build our riser. We're almost done. Uh, remember I had that section of six inch, that green pipe, it's called 3034. Uh, it's poor sewer, but anyway, I had that piece of six inch that I said we had to cut earlier in the video. Well, that's where that goes. That's the sleeve. Whenever you're traveling horizontal through uh, concrete, you gotta have a sleeve. Uh, it actually extends back further back there because there is actually a footer dug behind this form board and then poking out. You wanna let a little poke out but you're gonna cut it a pretty decent length. <coughs> After that, um, you're gonna take some spray foam, some uh, just expanding spray foam, and you're gonna fill that in. You're gonna fill it in on that side, and you're gonna fill it in over there on that side as well. And, and that's just to seal it, hold it in place, uh, and then you'll be done with that. The next part is you gotta put a 10-foot riser on here. And why is that? because we test our slabs with water column. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll talk a little more about water column while we glue this pipe together. You see, every 28 inches, roughly, it's actually 27 and 5 eighths or something, I can't remember. But if you just go with 28 inches, you'll be all right. Every 28 inches of water column provides one PSI, one pound per square inch of pressure at the base of that water column. And it doesn't matter what size pipe you got. If it's a inch and a half, if it's a three inch, if it's a 12 inch pipe, when you turn it up on its end and fill it full of water, every 28 inches of that pipe is gonna equal one PSI. Now, on a residential slab like this, they um, they want us to test with a 10-foot uh, riser for water column. You're going to have a 10-foot pipe. Now, we typically go with 3-inch. We just step straight up with our 3-inch um, and 
go with that, but you don't have to. You can put a bushing in this and you can go straight on up with an inch and a quarter pipe and it does the same thing. Uh, but you gotta remember, some of your inspectors, they're used to seeing stuff done a particular way. And they're pretty much looking for a three inch pipe. Now you might be the smartest plumber in the world, but if an inspector thinks he knows more than you, then that's the law. And they're not necessarily gonna pull that old code book out and prove you wrong. So it's just best to do it the way everybody else does it. Now on this guy, yeah, you want it bedded. You want it bedded down. And it doesn't matter if this gets shifted around this way and that way. This is not, this is just for our test. Your sewer guy's gonna come by later. He's gonna cut that off. He's gonna run his sewer line down to the city tap. And it doesn't matter where this was. Uh, but you do want to make sure you don't screw up what you got going on back there when you're gluing this together. Now this is my 10 foot piece I cut. And as you can see, I tied and then taped for reinforcement two pieces of string. Uh, and this is going to be like my guy wires or my stays to hold it because this is going to have 10 feet of water. It's going to be full slap all the way to the top when we get done with it. And that's a lot of pressure going side to side. So we're gonna string it off to our form boards back here and make it nice and sturdy. Which, just an interesting fact, I don't think it was planned this way. I don't think there's any physics or science to it. I'm sure there might be, but uh, every 28 inches of a three inch uh, PVC is one gallon of water. So if you want to figure that out, you can figure out how much, uh, how many pounds you have in 10 feet. I had it all figured out at one time, but I don't remember. I think this generates about seven and a half psi. But if you want to know more about water column, I did a video on it. And all my previous videos was all to get us to here. There we go. I'm gonna string this thing off. Um, and then we're gonna wait about 30 minutes for our glue to dry before we start trying to put a test on it. Uh, during that time, I'm gonna clean up, I'm gonna get some of these random pieces, go throw them in the trash. Uh, and that's what you should do on the job site too. Uh, try to keep the place clean, nice and tidy. But yeah, you gotta wait for glue to dry, so we got about 30 minutes. Well, this is pretty much how you're gonna do the test. You're gonna break out your ladder, get your water hose up there. Now, uh, this slab is in a kind of a remote location. So I did have to go get my little water buffalo trailer, which is just a tank and a pump in a, in a trailer. Um, I did a video on that. <laughs> and you're gonna stick your hose in the top and you're gonna let it gradually fill up. And eventually what's gonna happen, notice I didn't cap those off. Um, we're gonna get water coming out of whichever one's the lowest over there. And I think my lowest pipe is probably gonna be that one for the pedestal. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on it. When that water comes out, we're going to shut it down. We're going to kind of let everything settle down a little bit because that water is going to kind of want to bounce in that pipe. Uh, then we'll cap off all of our stub outs and uh, we'll fill it on the rest of the way up to 10 feet. Now, when you're on a ladder on a slab like this, you got to be careful because the ground's never level. You want to make sure it's down in there good so you don't fall. I have fallen off of a ladder on slabs plenty of time. Uh, Luckily, it's not that far to fall. But you are going to want to fill this pipe completely to the top. The reason for that is the way the inspectors test these things, they walk up to it and they slap it like that. And if water comes pouring out of the top of it, they'll pass you. If it 
doesn't come flying out of the top of it, they're gonna fail it, they're gonna think it's a leak out there somewhere. So you've gotta have this thing completely topped off. Uh, now while you're filling this thing up, walk around and look at those fittings. Uh, make sure you don't have any water pouring out anywhere. And uh, you're just gonna kinda patiently wait until it fills up. That's a lot of pipe. Remember what I said? Every three inches of PV, or every 28 inches of three inch PVC pipe is gonna give you about a gallon of water. So that's probably a lot of water it's gonna take to fill this thing up. Um, all right, now we just wait. It's coming on up. We're almost there. Uh, something else to think about when you're filling this thing up, you don't want to hammer that pressure in there. You, you kind of want to fill it up pretty slow because uh, if you just spray it in there real hard, you generate a lot of air bubbles and stuff. And uh, <coughs> that uh, those air bubbles will work their way out of the pipe uh, and it'll cause your uh, stack to drop over there. And uh, which is another reason why I haven't capped these. Because air will compress, uh, a liquid won't. So we're gonna wanna blow as much of that air out of here as we can before we cap it off. Look at all that pollen. Uh, there it is. Now we're gonna wanna shut it down and we're gonna let it sit. Well, I gotta admit, on a slab, when it comes down to that last little test a bit, there is kind of a lot of downtime, not a lot of waiting. Uh, something I really couldn't stand because uh, it's 30 minutes to let the glue dry. Uh, you got to kind of let this sit. I glue these little caps on. I got to wait another 30 minutes. Uh, some people wait about 15. Uh, but you want this to be dry as possible. When you first fill it up, it's going to sit there and go up and down in that pipe. But while that settles out, uh, we use these little test caps. They're just little flat, uh, some people call them wafer caps. These are not pressure caps. And these are not something you're going to leave uh, for a long time. Like if you're capping something off, you're probably going to want to get a, uh, a good Schedule 40 pressure cap if it's something that's going to stay capped for a long period of time. These are just temporary caps. There's not much to them. You can take a hammer, hit it, and it'll bust uh, bust a hole in it pretty quick. Um, but yeah, for this, you're gonna need threes and some twos. And you'll just run around and cap them off. And then we get to go take a break. Alright, I'm going to knock the rest of them out, we're going to take a little bit of a break, we're going to let this glue dry and we're going to come back and we're going to fill the rest of our riser up and we're going to be done, we're going to load it up, we're going to clean up, we're going to pick up all these strings, all the extra fittings and uh, we're going to go home for the day. Well, there it is.